Hey everyone, my name is Jess Archer and I'm a full stack developer at Laravel. Today, I'm here to talk to you about how we integrated Vite into the Laravel framework. For those that don't know, Laravel is an open source PHP framework for building web applications. Laravel focuses on creating a great developer experience and providing everything you need to build your app so you can focus on delivering value. While Laravel is technically a back-end framework, it has a lot of affordances for building powerful full-stack applications with whichever front-end framework you prefer. For the past five years, Laravel's default front-end build tool has been Laravel Mix. Laravel Mix is a wrapper around Webpack because while Webpack is a powerful tool, it requires in-depth knowledge to configure it properly. For example, this is a pretty typical Webpack config, and this is what a Mix config looks like. Here you can see our JavaScript entry point and our output directory. We're then running it through the view loader. We're also using post CSS with a CSS entry point uh, with a few post CSS plugins. And then we're setting up some aliases and versioning when we're in production. Hopefully this gives you an idea of the APIs we like at Laravel and what we'd need to live up to when replacing it. After joining Laravel earlier this year, my first big task was to investigate V because the speed improvements over Webpack were too good to pass up. Vite's primary use case is for building full JavaScript applications, so there are a few extra things we needed to do to make it work well with a backend framework like Laravel. We considered making another wrapper like Mix, but with Vite already being a joy to configure and already being a wrapper itself, we made the choice to write a plugin instead to allow our users to interact directly with Vite. The Laravel plugin's main job is just to configure Vite in a way that makes sense for a backend framework and to keep the user's Vite config light. So let me show you what it's like to use Vite with Laravel, and we'll dive into some of the features we added and how they work behind the scenes. So let's jump into our terminal and install a fresh Laravel application. This will also install Laravel Sail, which is a lightweight wrapper around Docker Compose. Once the installation is complete, we can start our containers using Sail Up. And now we're ready to jump into our browser to have a look at our application. Laravel doesn't come with a front-end framework out of the box, so at the moment this page is rendered using Laravel's server-side templating language called Blade. Now let's have a look at the Vite config that was created for us. Here we can see the configuration for the Laravel plugin. We're specifying a dedicated CSS entry point in addition to our JavaScript entry point, because when we're using server-rendered HTML, we can't wait for the JavaScript module to load it, otherwise we'd get a flash of unstyled content during dev mode. We also added a refresh option, which tells Vite to reload the page anytime we make a change to our Blade templates. But I prefer to use Vue.js, so I'm going to go and install one of Laravel's starter kits called Jetstream. Once the package is installed, we can scaffold our frontend using the Jetstream install command. I'm going to choose the inertia stack, which will automatically pass data between our frontend and backend. This will install a few NPM dependencies and then run our initial Vite build. Once the build is complete, we can run our initial database migrations. And now let's refresh the page in our browser. It might look the same, but this page is now powered by Vue.js and we have a login and register link up the top. If we click on register, I'll go ahead and create an account. And now we can take a look at Jetstream. Out of the box, Jetstream comes with profile management, including password updates, two-factor authentication, uh, the ability to log out other browser sessions, and the ability to delete your account. We can also enable other features such as profile photos, which I'll quickly show you now. If we jump back into our console and we'll dive into the Jetstream configuration file, and we'll come down to profile photos. We'll enable that and refresh. And now you can see we can upload profile photos. Let's jump back into our editor and have a look at the changes that Jetstream made to our vconfig. You'll see we now have a single JS entry point because when we're using Vue, we can import our CSS via JavaScript. We've also automatically installed the Vue plugin with a few options that are required to correctly transform asset URLs when the application is not being served by the Vite dev server. 
So let's go ahead and start the vDev server, which we can do by running npm run dev. You'll notice that we're outputting some extra information, including the Laravel version and the version of our plugin, as well as the URL for our Laravel dev server. You might also notice that Vite's not listening on its default port, and that's because its default port is currently in use by a Docker port forwarding that's been set up by Sale. So let's go ahead and stop this and run this via Sale instead. Now you'll notice it's running on the default port, but also that it's running on a network address. This is something we had to do automatically in the Laravel plugin, because when you're running Vite inside a container, if it only listens on localhost, then it won't be accessible outside of the container. Let's take a quick look at the plugin source to see how that works. Here's where we're returning all of our Vite config options. If we come down to the server option, we have a conditional group of settings here that's only enabled when the Laravel sale environment variable is present. Here you can see we're configuring Vite to listen on all network addresses, but we always respect the user's config if provided. If we come back to Vite, Another issue we ran into is that many of our users were mistakenly clicking on the Vite Dev Server link instead of the Laravel link. When users click this link, they'd see a blank white page because Laravel doesn't have an index.html template. So let's click on it now and see what we added. Here you can see we have a helpful message guiding our users towards running and accessing the Laravel Dev Server. We've also included a link to Laravel's Dev Server URL at the bottom. Let's jump back into our terminal and have a look how that works as well. If we come down to the configure server hook, you'll see that once the Vite dev server is listening, we determine the address for the server, and then we're outputting it to the console below Vite's URLs. If we come down a bit further, you'll see we've also set up a middleware so that any requests to index.html will instead return our dev server index with the application URL injected. So now that the Vite dev server is running, let's refresh the browser in our application to make sure we're using the dev server. Laravel automatically knows when the dev server is running and knows where to load the assets from. Let's jump back into code to see how that works. If we open up our main layout template, we'll see we have this Vite directive where we're specifying our entry point. When the dev server is running, it'll automatically inject the Vite client script and load the assets directly from the Vite dev server. Otherwise, it will resolve the compiled assets from the Vite manifest. So how does Laravel know if the Vite dev server is running and what the URL of the dev server is? Let's jump back into the plugin source. If we come back up to where we're listening for the dev server to start and where we're fetching the dev server URL, you'll notice that we're writing the dev server URL to a file called the hot file. Laravel can look for this file to know that the server's running and what the URL is. If we come down here, you'll notice we've set up a bunch of event listeners for when the process is exited. And when that happens, we go and delete the hot file. Let's go back to our project and have a look at the, what the hot file looks like. The hot file is located in the public directory right here. If I go and stop the Vite dev server and then come back again, you'll see down the bottom that the file is no longer available. And if I come and start it back up again, then you'll see it's back. This was an idea we took from Laravel Mix, and it's a really elegant solution because it doesn't require any configuration of hosts or ports on the Laravel side. It doesn't even matter if Vite ends up running on a different port. So now let's test it all out because I never get tired of how fast Vite does hot module replacement. Back in our browser, we'll come over to the dashboard and pop this over to the side. And then in our editor, I'll open up the dashboard.view that comes with Jetstream. If we come down to this welcome component, I'll delete this and then we'll add in a message of our own. Let's make it nice and big and, and bold, and let's give it a little padding. And we'll say, hi, the conf. Let's save that and have a look in our browser. And there we've got our message. Next up, I'd like to talk about a few advanced features. The first one is sub-resource integrity. This is a web browser security feature to ensure that the scripts you're loading have not been manipulated since you compiled them, perhaps by a dodgy content delivery network. This feature was recently added by my good friend and coworker, Tim McDonald. To enable sub-resource integrity, the only thing you need to do is add the Vite Manifest SRI plugin by Maximo Massini, 
which will automatically add integrity hashes to your Vite manifest on build. The Laravel framework integration will automatically detect these and add the integrity hash to your script and stylesheet tags. We also support Content Security Policy or CSP nonces, as well as other arbitrary attributes for things like Turbo. While we're on the docs, I would like to point out that we've written some pretty comprehensive docs for working with Vite and the Laravel plugin. We've also integrated with Laravel's serverless deployment platform called Laravel Vapor. When deploying with Vapor, your assets are automatically pushed to CloudFront. And if you're running a Vite build as part of your deployment, the Laravel plugin will automatically pass the CloudFront URL to Vite so that it can be used in any URLs in your compiled code. And it all happens automatically, as you might have guessed by now. I'd also like to mention Laravel's free bootcamp that we recently launched, which is a tutorial I wrote to teach you how to build a Laravel app from scratch, all the way to deployment, using your choice of Vue or React. And as you might have guessed, you'll be using Vite along the way. Well, that's it from me. I'm really pleased with our transition to Vite, and I've had so much positive feedback from the Laravel community. I'd also like to give a huge thanks to the Vite community, especially Mateus, Enzo, and Maximo, for all their help along the way. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm Jess Archer Codes. I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.